Railway transport is um, the use of train which run on railways connected to different towns. The use of trains which run on railways connected to different towns is what we call railway transport. And my question is, have you ever used railway transport? Majority of you use road transport and sometimes air transport. From home, from home going to school, the means of transport that you use is mostly road transport. And road transport is not a must you should be on in a vehicle or on a motorbike, no. Even walking on foot is also road transport. So majority of you don't use railway transport. And in fact, railway transport is not so common. Um, is not commonly used by the people. It is mostly used in transportation of goods from one point to another. So this is the use of trains which run on railways connected to different towns. The main railway line in Kenya, I'm on point two. The main railway line in Kenya runs from Mombasa to Naivasha via Nairobi. Remember the standard gauge railway line. The standard gauge railway line which was started by by Jomo, not Jomo Kenyatta, sorry, by Mwai Kibaki. Mwai Kibaki is the one that started the construction of the standard gauge railway, and then it was completed by Uhuru Kenyatta. I have put a picture down there. I put a picture down there of uh, Uhuru Kenyatta opening uh, the standard gauge railway, which started from Mombasa up to Nairobi, and then it is now being extended to Naivasha. I think the one connecting from Nairobi to Naivasha is complete and it is being used. So most of these, most of uh, most of the time, this railway line is used in transportation of imports and exports within Kenya and also some countries within Kenya that uh, sorry, some countries within Eastern Africa, which are which do not have a port. Remember to con um, countries that are landlocked and they, they are not connected to the port. So bulky goods which are imported or exported from those countries have to be imported using water transport. And the only alternative they have is uh, Kenya. So a country like Uganda, which is landlocked, exports have products, bulky products, through the Mombasa port. So they transport their goods on a railway from Mombasa, from Nairobi uh, to Kampala, then from uh, Nairobi to, to Mombasa. Then from there, the goods can be exported to overseas countries. The main railway line in Kenya, the Masama, it runs from Mombasa to Nairobi, and then from Nairobi to Naivasha. The major towns in Kenya, which are connected to the old railway. Remember, the new railway line that we have in Kenya today, the one that was constructed by the Chinese, is not the railway line that we used to have long ago. This is a different railway line. Before the construction of the standard gauge railway, before the standard gauge railway line was constructed, we used to have the old railway line. And this old railway line is the one that I've just written down here. The major towns which are connected to the old railway line include Mombasa, we have got Voi, uh, Taveta, Konza, Magadi, Nairobi, Nanyuki, Nyahururu, Solai, Kisumu, Nakuru, Butere, Eldoret, Kitale, and Malaba. Those are the some of the major towns in Kenya that are connected to the old railway line. And then we have got the standard gauge railway line. The standard gauge railway line is the one that we have today. And this one runs from Mombasa to Nairobi. And I've said that it is now being extended to Naivasha. And the standard gauge railway, uh, the standard gauge railway line always uh, or mostly deals with the uh, imports and exports within East African countries. That is uh, Kenya and her neighbors the neighbors that are landlocked like Rwanda, like Burundi and, and Uganda. These are countries that depend on this railway line so much. Railway transport is the best. I'm on point four. 
Railway transport is the best means of transporting bulky goods on land. The best. Remember, we have got different forms of transport. Air transport is not on land. Water transport is not on land. We have got two forms of transport which are which are located or which are found on land, and that is a road transport and pipeline transport. So on land, the best method or the best form of transporting bulky goods on land is a railway transport. But if you want to export, if you want to export bulky goods from Kenya, maybe to China, from Kenya to India, from Kenya to Japan, or you want to import some goods from China, bulky goods, the goods from China to Kenya, if they are bulky, like minerals, they are going to be imported using water transport. We don't have a railway line that runs from Africa to Asia. And that we have a railway line that runs from Nairobi to maybe UK, United, uh, United Kingdom, Aiko. So if you want to move from, if you want to move your goods from Kenya, maybe to the UK, or you want to move your goods from Kenya to Mongolia, or you want to move your goods from Kenya to Japan, the best means of transporting bulky goods is water transport, not railway transport. I'm saying that railway transport is the best means of transporting bulky goods on land. But if you want to export bulky goods, the best means of exporting bulky goods is water transport. I hope you got the difference. And then uh, the last point there, it is also the cheapest, cheapest means of transporting bulky goods. It is the cheapest means of transporting bulky goods. We are talking about railway transport vehicles. Railway transport is the cheapest when it comes to transportation of bulky goods. And we are going to look at different railway lines within Africa. And most of these railway lines within Africa are used in transportation of minerals. So people don't depend on railway transport for, uh, for, for movement. No, it is mostly for transportation of their goods. We can now move ahead and look at uh, something different. We can now look at this major railway lines in Kenya. Kenya has got different rail lines that run across. So there are so many towns within Kenya uh, that are connected to the, to the railway line. The first one is the Konza Magadi railway line. This railway line is connected to the Kenya Uganda railway. Kenya Uganda railway, the one that was constructed by the Asians, I think it was from 19. 1980, uh, 1985 to 1901, that's when it reached Kisumu. So we have the Konza Magadi railway line, which deals with the transportation of soda ash. Number two, we have got the Nanyuki Nairobi line. This one is another railway terminus, Nanyuki Nairobi line. This one, this railway line mostly dealt with transportation of animal products. Remember Nanyuki? Nanyuki is found on the leeward side of Mount Kenya. And on the leeward side of Mount Kenya, the major economic activity which is practiced there is uh, beef farming. Animals are kept in ranches. So during settler farming, in class five, you learn about settler farming, the type of farming which was uh, conducted or which was done by the settlers, the European settlers. So these people used to keep animals in, on, uh, in ranches. For them to transport animal products like skin, like skins and meat, they had to use uh, railways. So they had to construct uh, a line to join the major railway line, which is the Kenya Uganda Railway, so that they can transport the animal products from Nanyuki to Nairobi. And then from Nairobi, the products can be exported to overseas countries. And then we have got the Taveta Voi line. The Taveta Voi line, this one connects Voi and Taveta towns. And then the two are connected to the major railway line, which is the Kenya Uganda railway line. And this line, the Taveta Voi line, it mostly dealt with the transportation of sisal. Remember, sisal was introduced in Kenya from Mexico. 
and the main, the main producer or the main country growing sisal in Eastern Africa is uh, Tanzania. Tanzania is the main producer of sisal, followed by Kenya. So sisal was very important, especially to them, to them, how do we call this industry that deals with the textile industry. Sisal was important to the textile industry. So harvesting of sisal, remember sisal is very heavy, very bulky. So once sisal has been harvested, it had to be transported to the industry. So the Europeans had to construct this line, the Taveta boy line, which dealt with the transportation of sisal from Taveta to other parts of the country. And then we have got, uh, now this one is now outside Kenya. We have other railway lines which are connected within Africa. We have got the Tanzam railway line, the Tanzam railway line. Tan is the short form of Tanzania, and then Zam is the short form of Zambia. So Tanzam railway line connects Tanzania to Zambia. Remember Zambia and Zimbabwe are landlocked countries. If you check in your atlas or your textbook, check the location of um, Zambia and Zimbabwe. These two countries are not connected to the Indian Ocean, neither are they connected to the Atlantic Ocean. So these are countries, these are countries that depend on others for importation and exportation of bulky goods. They depend on others on importation and exportation of bulky goods. So they depend on Tanzania. Tanzania has got a major port, and the major port in Tanzania is Dar es Salaam. In fact, Dar es Salaam is the second largest port in Eastern Africa. The biggest port in Eastern Africa is um, the biggest port in Eastern Africa is uh, is, is Mombasa, sorry, followed by the Dar es Salaam port. So Tanzam railway line deals with the exportation. It deals with exportation of copper. We will learn about mining. And you will be taught that Zambia is the major producer of copper in Africa. And copper is a very bulky mineral. So for copper to be exported, it needs a railway transport. It needs a railway transport for it to be exported. Let us continue. So Tanzam railway line deals with the exportation of copper from Zambia. And I've said the reason why they are depending on this railway line is because Zambia is a landlocked country. And for the copper to be exported, it needs water transport. And I also said, I'm reminding you again, water transport is the only means of transport which is used in importation and exportation of bulky goods. And bulky goods, Ikran, bulky goods are heavy goods, goods that are very heavy. They cannot be transported using air transport to overseas countries. And I'm also using this word overseas. Maybe Muta Nashanga, Tija, overseas countries, are they countries over the sea? No. Overseas countries are countries which are not found within the African continent. Remember, we said we have got seven continents. So apart from Africa, some countries outside Africa as a continent also requires the minerals which are found within Africa and other resources. So those resources can reach those countries through water transport. So resources which are bulky, like minerals, they have to be exported using water transport. And countries that are not connected to the ocean, they depend on the countries which are connected to the ocean. Tanzania helps Zambia and Zimbabwe in exportation of copper using the Tanzam railway line. And then we have another railway line, the Angola Katanga railway line. Angola Katanga railway line. This is a, this is a railway line which connects um, Angola, Angola to the other country. And then we have got the Cape Town Harare line. This handles imports and exports from Zimbabwe. So Zambia is a neighbor of Zimbabwe. And these are two landlocked countries. So Zambia depends on the port of 
Dar es Salaam, which is in Tanzania. While her neighbor, Zimbabwe, depends on the port of South Africa, that is Cape Town. So Cape Town, South Africa constructed a railway line from Cape Town to Harare. Remember, Harare is the capital city of Zimbabwe. So Cape Town Harare line, this one handles imports and exports from Zimbabwe. Overhead, we have another railway line known as the Alexandria Wow railway line. We have the Trans Cameroon railway line. There is an NB there. The last point, the last point down there, the Kenya-Uganda railway line construction started in 1896. It's very important. It is now the last statement. It reached Kisumu in 1901. So if someone asks you, in which year did the Kenya-Uganda railway line reach Kisumu? The correct answer is supposed to be 1901. 1901 is when the Kenya-Uganda railway line reached Kisumu. And that is when Kisumu as a town started to develop to the big town that we have today. Let us move ahead and look at air transport. Let us look at air transport. And this is the last uh, form of transport we are going to discuss today. And then we end our lesson there. Air transport, it is the uh, is the movement of people and goods. Air transport is the movement of people and goods uh, using trains, sorry, using um, aeroplanes. It's the movement of people, goods, and services using aeroplanes. That is air transport. Kushai Panda Deg. Mimi Jana, Jana Usiku, Mekua, Mekua Anfield, we were celebrating the victory uh, after Liverpool the champions so i just landed today morning you can see i'm very very sleepy then the na microphone ya pilot moja so it's jikamu shai panda ndege if you've never used an aeroplane make an arrangement with me because my cousin is a pilot i can connect you so that you can use it once the lockdown is over so air transport is the movement of people. Like me, I just moved from UK to Kenya within six hours. By 3 p.m., by 3 a.m., nilukwana toka. And then by 6 a.m., nilukwana shafika. So you can see, it is the fastest, the fastest means of transport, yet very, very expensive. The fastest, but very expensive. Air transport is the movement of people and goods using aeroplanes. And we have got two types of aeroplanes. The first one is the passenger plane. It is here, 1.2. We have got two types of aeroplanes. We have got passenger planes and cargo planes. We have passenger planes and cargo planes. Cargo, cargo planes, they carry goods while passenger planes carry people. Class 5, kuna hili swali wa manaulizwa. From class 5 to class 6, you've been asked about um, the best means of transporting perishable goods, the best means of exporting perishable goods. And the answer is uh, air transport. Air transport is the best means of transporting perishable goods. These questions do confuse. I just completed uh, railway transport. Nanakawambia, railway transport is the best uh, a means of transporting bulk goods on land. And then I also stressed on this. Water transport is the best means of transporting. Water transport is the best means of uh, importing and exporting bulk goods. Now I'm adding something else. Air transport is the best means of transporting perishable goods to the overseas market. So from Kenya to Dubai, Flowers can be transported using air transport, not railway transport and not uh, water transport. So 
there are two types of aeroplanes. So such goods, such goods like um, goods like flowers, like medicine, uh, like jewelry, those ones you don't export using, you don't export, neither do you import them using, uh, using water transport. Those ones can be imported or exported using air transport. So that is how it is. And th those goods are carried by cargo planes, while passengers use, uh, um, while passengers use, I'm going to run some for just a minute. Uh, I was on point three. Cargo planes carry goods while passenger planes carry people. Let us continue. This is the fastest means of transport. Air transport is the fastest, the fastest means of transport. It is used in importation and exportation of perishable goods. And then it is among the second last point, it is the most expensive means of transport. And then lastly, Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu, and Eldoret are the only towns in Kenya with international airports. That marks the end of our, of our lesson. Unless if someone has any question, uh, you can unmute your mic and ask your question because I have only two minutes. I have only two minutes. Mutiyote mwenye kona swali, aweza kauliza. Anybody? You can unmute your mics. Anybody that wants to ask a question, you can unmute your